is of his appreciation there and we must welcome you sir on your university menu and department once again on your person i welcome you sir thank you thank you so much Thank you, Gerard, for this. Uh, it's a pleasure to be back here after 17 years. Uh, and thank you for that generous introduction. So what I suggest I will do in the first lecture today is to sort of demystify the impact of this method of reality. Another metaphor which has been used is that of the flying geese. You know, the geese always fly in a V kind of a formation. Uh, the EU as a super state, these are some of the you know, metaphors which have been used for to describe the European. Now, one thing you have to understand is that there are a number of reasons why economic and political integration took place in Europe in the first place. The first important reason is the search for a new identity. You know, narrow nationalism or chauvinism had led Europe into a terrible world war. And, you know, uh, more than 55 million people were killed in their crime. Uh, more than 6 million Jews were killed by the, Japanese, by the Germans. Uh, millions were starving. So people were looking for a new identity to take Europe away from narrow nations. That was reason number one. The second reason was the containment of Germany. What do you do about Germany who somehow has genetic ability to regenerate itself, uh, especially after the Second World War, it was called in German Stundenbull, that is zero hour. But somehow the Germans were able to re-energize themselves. So what do you do? Uh, because there was this widespread fear that Germany might unite itself, again become a potential danger both in East and West Europe. So how do you deal with the problem of containing Germany? The third, of course, was the wish for security major reason. Because you had a divided Germany and a divided Europe. And the post 45 scenario was that of the Cold War, you know, the struggle between the so-called free world and the communist countries. And it was broadly felt that by coming together, by economic integration would be the backbone for political integration. And this is how we would eventually uh, ensure the security because in 1945, the Soviet Union had a preponderance in conventional weapons. We had more many uniforms, they had more aircraft, they had more tanks. So all the scenario building which they would did was that of a potential conventional war which would take place. The fourth reason was hopes for economic prosperity and recovery. You know, Europe was devastated, people didn't have enough food to eat, high degree of unemployment. So the logic was that if a common market was created, this would create the potential for overall economic growth and prosperity. Another fundamental reason was trade and you shall not fight. That trade would create the roots for prosperity, economic growth, greater employment, so there would be no incentive for countries to go to a war. Another equally important reason was the expectation of a new shared power. You know, because with decolonization, uh, the uh, you know, in uh, 1914, the European colonial powers controlled 84% of the world's landmass. The European powers alone. Great Britain was a country on which the sun never set. But after the war, what happened was they were reduced to the status of second level middle powers, which by themselves did not have great uh, political influence overseas. And therefore, they felt that if a common regional economic movement was created, this would give them comparatively greater influence in world politics than otherwise. Another very important reason was that the elites of Europe became the prime movers and shakers towards creating this common market because uh, you know they realized from the very early stages that you know there was great potential for great prosperity in the future if a common market was created. Okay, Europe all along has been a net security importer you know, because it was incapable of defending itself. The American nuclear umbrella kept the peace. The 
physical presence of over 400,000 American troops on, on German soil, you know, kept a kind of ensured map, mutual assured destruction, you know, which sort of kept the balance in Europe. Uh, okay. The one feature which is unique in Europe is called elite socialization. That the process of European integration was